$1.4 billion will be used to move 60,000 to 70,000. Washington Journal continues. We want to welcome Nihad Awad, who is the executive director of an organization known as the Council on American-Islamic Relations. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning, Steve. Thank you for having me. Let's begin by asking you first about the Danish government. What should their response be uh, in, in reaction to these editorial cartoons, which first appeared last September, right. four months ago? Uh, apparently, there was uh, some dialogue between the local Danish Muslim community with the government and the newspaper for a long time. Uh, but apparently there was nothing, uh, there was no resolution. Um, and I think uh, there should be some, some, some breakthrough here. Um, uh, there should be some, some recognition that there's a problem and it's not like just a black and white issue. I think both sides have to come to terms to resolve this issue in, in, in a much peaceful way. We've met with the Danish ambassador just, uh, um, in fact, two days ago, and we proposed a goodwill uh, initiative uh, that some of us um, in the American Muslim community who have some experience in dealing with defamation and attacks here. Um, and, and we managed to pull through out of this, uh, you know, uh, in the past years uh, in a way that I believe was, uh, uh, you know, civil, uh, uh, peaceful, amicable, and brought probably more understanding. Um, we proposed that uh, some of us would go there and talk to the local Muslim community, also talk to the local newspaper and some media outlets and bring about better understanding. We believe that education is missing in this element. And if you have proper education and knowledge, you have more understanding and therefore more sensitivity and more respect. You have this from Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, who says, in this freedom, casting doubt or negating the genocide of the Jews is banned, but insulting the beliefs of 1.5 billion Muslims is allowed and so now what you have is at least one newspaper in Tehran that says, let's create editorial cartoons that will make fun of the Holocaust. I think what does this, that do? I think this is deplorable. This makes the situation worse. Um, I think the general Muslim public will disagree with that. Uh, I think we, we have to honor the memory of those who, those who were uh, killed and prosecuted, uh, regardless of the victims and regardless of the victimizer. Uh, I think we cannot just exacerbate the situation. Uh, I think uh, the Holocaust uh, is, is a lesson for all of us to learn, and we cannot just uh, mock it, we cannot just uh, deny it, we just have to live with the fact uh, that it happened, we have to learn uh, the lessons from that history, and I think that should, that should be the, 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 the way to approach uh, conflict. Uh, we don't repeat conflict and we don't make things worse. Our phone lines are divided as follows for the next 45 minutes. If you're Muslim, Give us a call at 202-737-0001. And for all others, we ask that you call at 202-737-0002 as we get more reaction to these editorial cartoons. And there's a story from Kevin Sullivan in the Washington Post. The headline says, Turmoil over cartoons began quietly among Danes. And Fleming Rose, who is the... Uh, the editor who said he smelled a good story said that he had read that museums in Sweden and London had recently removed artworks that their staff deemed offensive to Muslims. A Danish comedian told him that he felt free to desecrate the Bible, but that he'd be afraid to do the same to the Koran. Then Rose read that a Danish children's book author could not find illustrators who dared to draw Muhammad for a new book on Islam. And so Rose, the culture editor for the Yulin Posten newspaper, suspected that the art was self-censoring out of fear of Islamic radicals. So he contacted 25 Danish newspaper cartoonists with a challenge. Draw Muhammad as you see him. Twelve responded, and the newspaper printed their submissions, including one that depicted the Islam's holiest figure with a bomb in his turban. What's wrong with that? Okay, um, let me then explain um, the background, why Muslims uh, are sensitive about depictions um, and the kind of the, this depiction and, and, and what happened. Um, this was designed to be a book for children. Children need to learn uh, objective uh, information about history, but not stereotypes and misinformation. And I think the, the, the ones who commissioned the cartoonists could not overcome their ignorance and hatred of maybe 1400 years about Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad died 1400 years ago, for God's sake. Um, and he is the, uh, the, the prophet of Islam. He preached peace and mercy. When he was attacked personally and abused, 
by people who uh, ridiculed him. Um, and when he became powerful, he forgave these people. He counseled his companions not to punish and not to torture. Um, in fact, there was a known story that a lady, uh, one of his neighbors, used to put trash in his way every day. Um, he never shown any reaction. Once she did not put a trash in, in, in a particular day, he asked about her. He was told that she was sick. He paid her a visit. This is the example of the prophet. Now, this cartoon, had it been a casual political cartoon about current events, I see every day cartoons in newspapers and magazines about Muslims. Sometimes we challenge it, sometimes we let go, because, yes, there are some Muslims who commit heinous crimes, and we all condemn them. But the, to equate the Prophet Muhammad and the entire religion of Islam with terrorism is A, deeply offensive, inaccurate, and provocative. And if you want to ch teach children uh, about Prophet Muhammad, teach him the good information, the right information. But do not make the situation worse. Uh, so it was a challenge. And I think Muslims in, the, uh, in Denmark tried to negotiate and deal with the situation for months. Um, when it went outside the boundaries of Denmark, uh, people started to uh, launch boycotts. So everything was peaceful. Unfortunately, until just a few days ago, some violent Muslims started to take irrational behavior and actions by burning embassies, by burning the flags. And I believe this is very deplorable. We reject them. We had a news conference last Sunday, and we said this should be rejected by all Muslims. And what you see on television does not represent the 1.5 billion people around the world who are deeply and equally offended, but they do not take violent action. Denmark, by the way, a country of about 5.5 million, 200,000 of those of the Muslim faith, according to the Washington Post and the Yulin Post, in which uh, Yulin is the uh, area that is adjacent, uh, borders with uh, Germany. From the Washington Post, uh, Fleming Rose said that he bristled when asked if he had any regrets about publishing the cartoons. Asking me that is like asking a rape victim if she regrets wearing a short skirt at the discotheque on a Friday night. But the newspaper is offering a gesture to its critics on Sunday. Rose said that it will publish a full page of cartoons that satirize Jesus and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. He said all 12 or so of the cartoons have appeared in the paper previously. Fleming Rose joined us yesterday. Peter Slen, who was on the program, talked to him about this controversy. And one of the questions why it surfaced now when these cartoons first uh, were published last September. Now know for a fact that in, in, in December and January, um, a small group of radical Danish imams who are in favor of establishing Sharia law in our, in, our, in our country, they traveled to the Middle East and they deliberately lied and misinformed about the context uh, and about the, the situation for Muslims in Denmark. For instance, they were bringing along very offensive cartoons that were never printed in my newspaper, one depicting the prophet having sex with an animal, another depicting the prophet as a pedophile, and a third one depicting the prophet as a pig. The pig is, an, is, a, is a, a dirty animal, according to Islam. Uh, so they deliberately try to, 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 uh, to, to raise public opinion against Denmark after they had used and have, had access to all uh, the, the, the institutions and tools of Danish democratic society. That from yesterday's Washington Journal, our guest here, Nihar Awad, the Council on American-Islamic Relations. Let's get to your phone calls. We've divided our phone lines for those of you who are of the Muslim faith and all others. Ashburn, Virginia, good morning. Hey, how you doing? Go ahead, caller. Um, um, thank you so much for actually uh, having, uh, having me over. Uh, first of all, I would just like to say C-SPAN, uh, you guys are really good media, one of the probably the only biased media out there. What I really quickly wanted to say was, I'm actually um, pretty liberal Muslim myself, but the point I wanted to make was, first off, uh, like even myself, I was offended by the cartoons, uh, because not only because it depicted the, the holiest figure in Islam, but the fact that they depicted him as a terrorist, so which meant automatically that everybody who followed him um, belonged to that terrorist group. And, and having lived through the aftermath of 9-11 over here in the United States, I was really offended. It was like almost um, 
um, starting the new stigma um, in Europe and around the world. So, for, and if you look at the, the press in the Muslim world, they don't really um, cartoon other religions like this. So, so to me, I was pretty offended. But at the same time, um, obviously, protests like the way they've gone all violent and crazy like that, obviously, that's not right either. And that's what majority, majority, huge majority of Muslims believe. And I guess one thing, one more thing I wanted to say was that we all Muslims would need to um, come out and be vocal about it um, and, and show the world that this is not what Islam is and this is not what the Muslims are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think this is the view that's shared with the most Muslims uh, in the United States and I believe around the world. But unfortunately, the camera zooms on those and, and uh, uh, you know, rightly so, uh, we cannot deny it that people who took violent actions against embassies and attacked uh, innocent people. And I, I believe this is not the spirit or the character of Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad forgave people and he embraced people. And uh, when he even had the, uh, the, the upper hand, it not, was, was not an act of weakness, but it was an act of love and compassion. And this is the true example of Prophet Muhammad. So I agree with the caller. Fairfax, Virginia, good morning. Uh, good morning. Um, you know, anybody over 60 years old knows that we've had to watch cartoons of uh, the Muslims being horrible people ever since they started inventing cartoons in this country. I think it's wrong. And I know after 9-11, um, I had to watch in horror as my American countrymen bombed, firebombed mosques, uh, attacked and killed Sikhs. You know what Sikhs are? Remember the Sikh community attacked and killed Sikhs because they thought they were Muslims. And we are, need to treat, you know, it's not civilized to make nasty, filthy, dirty cartoons of people and try to make fun of people who are another race or another religion. If we're a civilized country, we can't continue to do this. And as far as Iran, we overthrew a constitutionally elected president of that country, and here we go picking on them again for Israel. This is wrong. Thank you, caller. And let me share with you and our audience this, um, you might want to call it editorial cartoon. It's from the Washington Times. The caption says, American free speech as currently practiced under the threat of Islamist violence. And for our radio listeners, it is a blank page in the Washington Times editorial cartoon page. I think this is another extreme. Um, I believe the Washington Times is extreme in, in that position. They can depict uh, people uh, the way they want, but they should not touch, uh, you know, holy uh, values of, uh, of, of Muslims and other people. I think the Washington Times will not, and should not, by the way, should not depict, for example, a Jewish rabbi with a bomb under his yarmulke just to criticize Israel. This is wrong. And I, I challenge them to do it, but they will not do it. And if they do it, I will be the first one also to criticize them. Um, the problem here is some Muslims took violent action, and this is deplorable. And I think with free speech comes responsibility. On the front page of the Washington Times, the Washington Post, you will not see nudity. You will not see naked people. You will not see vulgar language. These are guidelines, probably unwritten, but it's common, it's common sense and, and, and good judgment. Uh, that common sense and good judgment should be lent also to Islam uh, and Muslims, whether as a minority uh, or as the faith of 1.5 billion people. In this day of age, we live in an inter interdependent economy. We work in a global society and global family. We cannot just look at each other as one versus the other, us versus them. We, I mean, this was in the past. Today, we depend on each other. We have to have a peaceful coexistence, and that peaceful coexistence only happens when people show respect and restraint. But aren't Muslims fanning the flames in all of this? The Eulet yeah. Poston is not a widely distributed newspaper. Right, and I agree with you. Uh, the, 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 there was an overreaction, uh, especially the violent one. Um, and I, again, if it was meant to challenge Muslims, 
Muslims challenged them back. So it was a childish uh, thing to start with, like they want just to poke you in the eye. If they, for example, depicted uh, the leader of Al-Qaeda, nobody would care. Uh, you know, uh, there's violence, there's terrorism, and you can do it. But to go and equate the entire religion of Islam, which means peace, and those who are objective in studying history and knowing at least a fellow Muslim, whether as a neighbor or as a friend or classmate or client, would testify that this is a noble religion and it is a mercy to mankind, not only to Muslims themselves. So th th there's a serious misunderstanding there, a historic cumulative of stereotypes, and we just have to deal with this probably through education. I I'm amazed that in this day of age, um, people are resorting to old and uh, old-fashioned stereotypes that I thought maybe were beyond that point. Uh, I hope that education will be one way to deal with it. Chicago is our next caller. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. Hello? Yes, good morning. We can yeah, hear you. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I uh, first thank uh, this panel uh, for this window, uh, this big opportunity to, uh, to talk and uh, express uh, our opinions really uh, live, uh, I mean, uh, nationwide. Also, thank Mr. Nihai Dawai for the good work he's doing for CARE organization. And uh, I just want uh, to actually say uh, uh, one word, actually. I'm deeply offended for what happened uh, in Denmark and for what's happening right now in uh, Lebanon, Syria, and uh, burning uh, councils that has nothing to do, actually, with uh, our religion uh, of Islam. And uh, to really, uh, really depict the Prophet Muhammad you know, as a terrorist with a bomb in his turban, this is really one of the uh, ultimate, actually, crimes, you know, that can be, uh, I mean, uh, committed against, you know, uh, a religion. You know, this is not, this has nothing to do with the freedom of speech. And uh, I'll, as a Muslim, too, I'll be more offended, too, if somebody depicted Jesus or Moses or Noah or any other prophet of Islam, you know, because this is, has nothing to do with the freedom of speech. You know, we're all actually humans. And we have to convince each other with our beliefs, you know. I mean, this is not the right way to do it. And I, and I guess, actually, uh, this is also a warning for all of us Muslims, you know. That there is something wrong with us, you know. Because, you know, this has to do, actually, we have maybe to go back and, and review our attitudes and behaviors, you know. And I'm saying this really because, I mean, as a Muslim, I have to say the truth. And I think, you know, we have to go back to the, to the way the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to live, you know. And I think we have to correct our attitudes, you know, because the Denmark newspaper, you know, they criticize the Muslim in that way because there is something wrong, you know. And, and I think we should take this as, a, as an advantage, too, in the same time. And we have, you know, to, to go back and, and, uh, and review our behavior and uh, convince people that Islam is the right way. And thank you so much, uh, Sister. Thank you, caller. Thank you. Um, you know, if I may add just another point. Um, uh, point of education that uh, in Islam in general there is no depiction of any uh, holy people with like Jesus, Abraham, Noah, uh, Isaac, Jacob or Muhammad. If you go to any mosque you will not see images of anybody. Uh, so in, in Islamic art it's uh, it only like geometrical art, uh, no depiction of God in any uh, form or, sh or shape. Um, so this is one part of it. The second part of it as I said is when the entire religion of Islam through Prophet Muhammad uh, uh, is depicted uh, uh, as, as a terrorist religion or Muhammad as a terrorist. The third part is the background of this. Uh, there is a feeling in the Muslim world that there's a growing anti-Muslim rhetoric in the West. Uh, uh, hate crimes against Muslims, Islamophobia, the war on Iraq. There is a suspicion in the Muslim world vis-a-vis -vis the West and how they view uh, the Muslim world and what they have for, for, for them in their agenda. Um, and also, in, in, in addition to that, there have been insults against Prophet Muhammad in the past uh, by key leaders, uh, religious leaders in, in, in this country. For example, Jerry Falwell, Franklin Graham, Pat Robertson. And these news travel around the world. So this cartoon seems to be like the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, people are upset. Most people protested, uh, boycotted, uh, maybe wrote news, uh, uh, wrote letters to newspapers. But again, the few that took violent actions do not represent the Muslim world, do not represent the 1.5 billion people who live their life normally. They believe in freedom of the, of the press, freedom of expression. But again, they see it you know, too straight.
comes, it comes with responsibility. Who was the Prophet Muhammad? The Prophet Muhammad uh, was born in uh, 570 AD and died in 632 uh, AD. Um, he was uh, the last prophet of God. His message uh, that was revealed to him is similar to the message that was revealed to Jesus, Noah, Adam, Jacob, and Isaac, that it is a monotheistic religion, the worship of one God. Uh, uh, he did not write the Quran. He did not author the Quran. Uh, he could not read or write. Uh, the Quran was revealed to him, and his teachings, his uh, own sayings, are very different than the Quran in style, in grammar, in context. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, his life is the example of the Quran. Where did he live? Uh, he lived in, in uh, he was born in Mecca uh, and died in, in Medina, in Saudi Arabia. Next call comes to us from Long Island, New York. Good morning. Good morning. Your mm. guest, Mr. Awad, says that the majority of Muslims condemn the violence that's perpetrated in their name. And I think they ought to condemn it just as loudly as they're condemning this cartoon. And they haven't. Can you tell me why? Um, I think uh, they, they, they condemn it. Uh, um, after 9-11, uh, this is like one of the most uh, frequent questions we're asked. Have Muslims condemned 9-11? Uh, we have. If you visit our website, uh, CAIR.com, you will see that we have a petition, uh, not in the name of Islam. We deplore and condemn any acts taken in the name of Islam, regardless of the, uh, uh, the perpetrators and regardless of the victims. Um, I think you don't see uh, their voices uh, hitting the airwaves in the United States, but rest assured that the majority of Muslims worldwide condemn 9-11 uh, and condemn violence against innocent people, even they condemn the violence in Iraq. Having said that, we, we should acknowledge the fact that it is more complicated than that. The, the Muslim world feel that there are some grievances vis-a-vis -vis the West. Uh, for the past 100 years, many of their countries have been colonized. They do not have freedoms in their countries under unelected uh, uh, governments. Uh, there is no freedom of the press that we enjoy here in the West. Um, uh, civil liberties are not in the, in, in the best shape. Um, and of course, as I said earlier, uh, they feel that the, the growing anti-Islam attitude and Islamophobia in the West is just going fast. Um, but again, I agree with you that uh, probably you need to see more voices. Um, here's one. Uh, we are Muslims, we are American Muslims, and we condemn any violence in the name of Islam because it is in violation of the spirit and teachings of Prophet Muhammad. Our guest is the Executive Director of the Council on American-Islamic Relations. Nihad Awad is an American citizen. He was born, though, in the Palestinian territories and lived in Jordan. Actually, actually in Jordan. I was born in you Jordan. You were born in Jordan as well? <laughs> we'll update our uh, uh, bio of you. Okay. Also attended the University of Minnesota where you studied engineering? Yes. And our next call is from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, this is uh, Amin. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually. I'm, it's very hard to get me angry, but I was, I was, I was deeply, I was deeply angry and, and frustrated with, with, with not only the cartoons, but also with the reaction that I've seen over here in, in the newspapers in the West. The way the argument has been framed is absolutely. Horrible and horrendous. Uh, uh, I was listening to to Newt Gingrich talking about in terms of of uh, uh, Winston Churchill and uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt versus uh, Hitler and uh, Margaret Thatcher and and um, uh, Reagan versus uh, the Soviet Union and then uh, evil versus good. As if well, like these Muslims are are just people who are going to uh, to destroy the earth and and do all these awful things. Uh, we're human beings. We're just like you. We are citizens of this country, and we are citizens of uh, other countries, and and we just want respect, and we want what everybody wants. Um, I mean, it's just deplorable the way it has been. Things have been depicted, depicted over here. The way the argument has been framed over here, in in, in some actually in Fox News and some other networks, uh, um, and also this thing has been has been on the news for so long since like. At least October, I have heard about it, and and the thing is that it, it, there was no reaction to it that was violent, which I condemn. Everybody condemns until until the, the next day, uh, uh, the next week after after the the boycott, 
every almost every newspaper in in Europe reprinted the whole thing as if kind of like and taunting them it was like it was like putting putting at the flames to the fire. Thank you, caller. We'll get a response, Mr. Um, you know, um, I agree with a lot of what the, the caller said, but also uh, we have to acknowledge the fact that. Some newspaper, not not every newspaper in Europe, uh, uh, reprinted the cartoons uh, as a form of uh, challenge to Muslims and in support of the newspaper. I believe that was also an extreme uh, behavior and measure. And also, I have to really commend uh, the U.S. media, the mainstream media, uh, and and uh, the State Department uh, for taking a, 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 a I think a good judgment by not reprinting the cartoons because the story is already known. Uh, it, the, we, we did not need to inflame the situation further, and I think that testifies to the maturity. We have first, first Amendment speech in the United States, so our rights are guaranteed as the press and as individuals. But I think I'm happy to say that uh, the, most of the mainstream media exerted and exercised good judgment by not reprinting, and that is a show of respect both to their fellow Muslims in the United States and around the world. And for that, I think we're grateful. Next call is Bradbury, Connecticut. Good morning. You're on C-SPAN. Uh, good morning. Um, um, this is Meriden, Connecticut, actually. Oh, I'm... That's quite good. all right. Uh, okay. Thank you for C-SPAN. You'll get it right. Um, Thanks. Good morning. I'd like to associate myself with the comments of the woman from Long Island and perhaps expand on that a little bit. Um, I don't think that there's nearly enough uh, assertive um, action on the part of... Um, moderate uh, uh, Islamic uh, groups to combat what was uh, shown on the earlier clip um, about the radical um, imams uh, transporting um, falsified uh, cartoons and so forth to try to inflame other Muslim communities in, in other parts of the world. Um, I think that the thing that really um, frightens me and I think many other people is um, this whole um, business of Sharia law. I know as a woman in the United States, um, women here actually haven't even had the vote all that long. And when we see situations uh, have <clears throat> uh, developing in, in Iraq, for instance, where we supposedly went to liberate these people, and now um, we see women being um, put under um, much more rigorous constraints in that, uh, in that society, um, that's not something that I think we went to achieve there. And I think that when we hear about uh, radical Islam um, developing or being more um, um, more powerful in certain parts of the world and the kinds of situations under which people have to live, uh, similar to what the Taliban imposed in Afghanistan years ago, that's scary to people. And I think that modern uh, Islam uh, needs to be far more vocal um, in an organized fashion and in a more public fashion and not just not just react to situations as uh, such as the one that's happening right now, but to be out there all the time uh, and and have a countervailing force um, to to those people out there that are um, really uh, fomenting uh, unrest in various parts of the uh, Muslim world. So I'd like to hear uh, I'd thank like you to hear a comment on that. Thank you. And along those lines, there's this email from Robin in Indiana who said. I think the depictions of Muhammad crossed over the line and were racist. However, I have just read that frequent denigrating depictions of Jews regularly appear in Muslim papers. Is that true? And if so, I don't understand the double standard. Um, um, should I respond to both yes, comments? Yes, please. Okay. And uh, I think the, the, the caller raised very important points uh, from the beginning. Uh, you know, I just uh, I would like to share uh, this uh, with the viewers. I called the local Danish Muslim leaders and I asked them about specifically about the fact that they were accused of uh, sending to the Middle East and the Arabic press uh, extra cartoons that were not designed by the same cartoonists and they were criticized for uh, you know inflaming the situation and the, the person who was I think a spokesperson for the uh, organizing group of the Danish Muslims told me that this is untrue and he referred to a newspaper who ran an investigative story on this and proved that what they sent to the Arabic press did not contain extra uh, cartoons to inflame the situation. So again, this can be debated, but I spoke directly to some people there and they denied that. Uh, the second point is the situation of women and the liberation. 
Islam is a liberating force. Islam gave the right to women to vote, to uh, have their own property, to maintain their name when they get married. Um, the Prophet Muhammad himself worked for his wife, who used to be a businesswoman. What you see today in some Muslim societies in terms of um, um, limiting the freedom of women, um, and this is despite Islam, in violation of Islam, it's due to some cultural and sometimes pre-Islamic practice. Um, but once Islam is, is researched and practiced, you will see that Islam give equal freedom to women as well as men. Um, let me just cite maybe a few examples. Uh, there have been uh, more than one prime minister in Muslim countries in the past few years, in Bangladesh, in Turkey, um, in, in uh, uh, and other places. Um, the, the, the right to vote and to, to practice uh, one's freedom uh, is within Islam, protected, protected within Islam, but unfortunately sometimes we don't see it practiced in some Muslim societies. Um, the issue of a double standard? The, uh, yes, there is a double standard in, in the Middle East when it comes to depiction of uh, Jews and other minorities, but also I have to say that there are voices who criticize uh, you know, those forces. So we have we have a problem there. It is not uh, uh, all 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 in, in all societies, uh, and it's not widespread. But there are voices who challenge hate speech the same way we have people here who challenge hate speech. Next call is from Newcastle, Delaware. Good morning. You're on C-SPAN. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, Go ahead with hear. your comment. Yes. Um, I think Denmark and any countries that print these cartoons uh, should be ashamed of themselves. Uh, I think those who say Muslims are overreacting are advocating hate and anti-Islamic sentiments, uh, especially in the time when uh, Muslims are under siege here in America and overseas. Uh, a young uh, a woman wore, wore a uh, shirt to the State of the Union, which uh, gave the statistics about the people who have died and the soldiers who have died in Iraq. And she was removed from the Capitol building before... Um, the speech even started. And this is the cradle of uh, freedom of speech, where we have First Amendment rights of freedom of speech. And she didn't say anything. She just wore a shirt and was removed from the Capitol. Um, you know, I just had a comment. And what do you have to say about that? I think the caller is referring, if I'm not mistaken, to Sandy Sheehan, uh, whose son was killed in Iraq. And, uh, and the wife of Congressman Young. Yes. And, and she was invited uh, to be, uh, uh, to attend and, and, and see the uh, State of the Union addressed by President Bush, uh, and she was removed from, from, uh, from being there because she had a T-shirt apparently protesting President Bush and uh, the war on Iraq. Um, so um, it skipped my mind, but I think uh, the caller is raising a good point. Um, uh, we have to protect uh, free speech, but uh, as we all say, when it comes to the press and other uh, uh, you know, outlets, it comes with, with responsibility. This email from a viewer who says, your guest needs to take his blindfolds off and understand that many Muslims take to the streets with violence because it has been part of their culture for decades. I know because I lived in Indian Kashmir as a Hindu for the first 20 years of my life. What should bother your guest is that I do not hear any condemnation of the violence from the Muslim world. I think that's an exaggeration. Um, if he researches the, the, the news, uh, our organizations, mainstream scholars around the world uh, goes and sees websites, he will see, we, he will see condemnation. If it's researched, they will see condemnation. But at the same time, here in America, when people feel strongly about something, they go to the streets. I go to the street with them when, when I feel strongly. Thomas Jefferson said that, you know, if people go to the streets to protest something, I put the entire society on trial. So freedom of expression, as long as it is civil and peaceful, I think should be embraced and should be respected. Our guest, Nihad Awad, is the executive director of an organization that you can log on at the website cair-net.org, the Council on American-Islamic Relations, and our next call comes to us from Minneapolis. Good morning. Actually, we've got Long Beach, California next. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to say that all along the line here, I hear callers calling, talking about the Muslim world and the Christian world, and that seems to be a big part of the problem right there. Um, people right now in America, being a young country, we tend to blame, blame, blame. We don't look at before 
all the major um, destruction and violence was by Christians, for example, the Oklahoma bombing and the abortion clinic bombings, the KKK, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but it wasn't called Christian terrorists. Now we're quick to label as Muslim terrorists, anyone who creates violence. I think that this tactic is used by opportunistic uh, leaders to try and inflame people to take sides. And I just think that people need to take responsibility to think for themselves, to observe what's going on in the world, and try to um, decide what is right and what is wrong, regardless of anyone's religion, which really shouldn't be anyone's business. Thank you. Um, I agree with the caller that we should take away religious terms when it comes to political conflicts. For example, there is no such thing that um, uh, I would uh, consider a Jewish terrorist or a Christian terrorist or a Muslim terrorist. There is no such thing either called radical Islam or moderate Islam. Islam is one. You have radical people and you have moderate people. It's up to their behavior. Um, so uh, these labels do not help the situation. Uh, and I think if we just uh, refer to people according to their act, we will be in a much better situation. Uh, if someone commit, commits a crime or terrorism, we call him a terrorist. Uh, Eric Rudolph, the one who bombed abortion clinics, and he professed uh, Christianity in many of his uh, uh, undertakings, uh, was never referred as a Christian terrorist, and he should not be referred to, to as a Christian terrorist because there's a level of sensitivity in the society not to equate Christianity with the acts of Rudolf, uh, Eric Rudolf. The same way you know, in Uganda, you have the Lord Resistance Army uh, that professes Christianity, and they would like to build a Christian state uh, through terrorism. We should not call them Christian terrorists, but yet they are holding religion in one hand and uh, bombs in, uh, in other, another hand. The same way some Muslims do it. So let's divorce religion from these crimes and uh, keep the teachings of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam the way they are, that bring peace to the family, bring peace to the world, and coexistence and brotherhood. Ham Shahari is the newspaper that uh, is getting the story this morning inside the New York Times. The headline says that the contest for cartoons mocking the Holocaust announced in Tehran, and the paper saying that it wanted to see whether freedom of expression extended to mocking the Holocaust. It invi invited foreign cartoonists to enter the contest, and the newspaper said that the serious question for Muslims is whether the West extends freedom of expression to the crimes committed by the United States and Israel or an event such as the Holocaust, or is its freedom only for insulting religious sanctities? Minneapolis is our next caller. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Good Hello? morning. Go ahead. I'm, uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you for C-SPAN for being the, the, the real journalism in the United States. I'm a uh, U.S. citizen. I served the uh, U.S. Air Force in um, in the 1990s. I was in the Operation Desert Storm, and I really appreciate Mr. Awad coming and talking about uh, the Muslim view, but the American Muslim view, because I am an American Muslim. I don't know to be anything beside a Muslim American. I just want to talk to about the positive image that uh, CARE and other organizations bringing to American societies right now. I just want to hear a little bit about the positive uh, impact of Muslims in this country. Besides, we are only hearing the negative all the time about Muslims, and we bring, uh, you know, uh, organizations talking about the negative. What's about the positive? We want to hear that, about that more often. Thank Pre you. Appreciate thank the you call. Ben. Thank you, Minneapolis. Well, you know, the common expression in the media, if, if it bleeds, it leads. So uh, the more sensational uh, uh, news make it, uh, unfortunately, to the, uh, to the ears and eyes of people. But I appreciate the fact that, yes, uh, we have to show um, uh, um, who we are as, as American Muslims, as a contributing community uh, to our great uh, nation, the United States. Uh, the level of education of American Muslims is above average, is high in the United States. Also, the level of income is, is above average. Uh, there are tens of thousands of of Muslim physicians. You hardly walk into any hospital, Steve, and, and do not see a Muslim physician. Uh, or in the IT business, 
great many of our graduates are in high-tech uh, corporations, they are inventors, and uh, these are probably six to eight million people contributing on a daily basis to this great nation through science, through social services, through spirituality, and good citizenship. And the, the few bad apples here and there uh, you know, are the exception to the rule. And I hope that uh, probably more media outlets will focus on the nature and contribution of American Muslims as a growing, vibrant community. For Nihara Wad, our next call comes to us from Portland, Oregon. Good morning. Welcome to the program. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I'd just like to ask your guests a couple questions. Um, uh, I, would, I would like to know, uh, I was in the, in the service in the, in the early 70s. I was stationed in Beirut. I traveled to Iraq. I was all over uh, Iran. I mean, uh, uh, I've been all over that, that whole area. Been in most of the madrasas. Uh, Listen to the teachings of your children. Uh, has is isn't it a fact that basically the the um, the uh, the Muslim religion has actually been taken advantage of because of a, a situation that happened almost 900 years ago with the with the Crusades. Uh, basically, they're very unhappy because basically they won they won the battle, but they lost the war. It seems like. Uh, they're very unhappy. The the uh, teachers are teaching things. Uh, they don't, and and this is the strange part. Here in the United States, it, it, it they don't behave that way. But in in uh, in uh, the Muslim countries, they're teaching their young children uh, that they really have no use for us. Thank you. Uh, I was born and raised in the Middle East, um, and uh, I think the the Crusades is something. Uh, uh, most people around the world are ashamed of. Um, the Pope himself uh, 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 said that it, it was wrong. Um, and I think these brutal wars they bring nothing but destruction and memories, bad memories to all civilized people. And I think one thing we should learn from the past is not to repeat the bad part of it and just look forward for brotherhood and coexistence. The second thing is uh, madrasas are just the name for schools. There are Bible schools in the United States, uh, in, many in many countries, including in the Muslim world, and there are Quran uh, schools that teach people how to read and memorize the Quran. Fanaticism and extremism does not necessarily come from these people. It comes from the attitudes of certain people who are either misled or they just try to take advantage of some political situations to serve their own interests. So how do you tamp down the inflammatory remarks on all sides? I think education and mainstream leaders have to exercise more leadership. Um, and the majority, the silent majority, has to speak up to isolate and marginalize not only these people, but also to show them that when they lead by good example, uh, that they prove things uh, uh, can be done in a different way. Uh, the majority of people around the world, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, uh, have good sense of good judgment, and they adhere to universal values. This is not a clash of civilizations or values. This is a clash of extremism, the Samuel Huntingtons and the Bin Ladens. We have to isolate these voices when we exercise ourselves good example in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in the media, in politics, and look at each other as partners in this world, but not as adversaries. Our guest, Nihad Awad, who is the Executive Director of the Council on American-Islamic Relations, thank you very much for coming back. Appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. This morning, front page of USA Today has the photograph from yesterday's services in Lithonia, Georgia, and the headline says, Coretta Scott King.